If you've been applying to jobs recently on LinkedIn, there's a likely chance you briefly glanced at that number of applicants on the job posting and proceeded to cry. But really, we cannot forget to mention the things that actually make us cry while job hunting. Like that goddamn discrepancy between the job title and the job description. Can someone explain to me why I need five to eight years of experience for a freaking junior position? Who came up with that? So yeah, currently junior positions require mid-level years of experience. Uh, unfortunately, mid-level is the new senior and entry level, I don't even know where entry level falls. But guys, hope is not lost. That's right, even though you'll need five to eight years of experience just to get your first job out of college, you can easily get ahead of the competition. How, you may ask? Well, you just keep applying, right? Just keep applying. What else are you gonna do? Just apply. Just keep applying. You just keep applying. Yeah, the smart folks actually are doing just that. They are applying to an absurd amount of positions every day. I mean, I read these Reddit posts of people applying to like 600 positions in a month and only hearing one reply back, one good reply at that. Now I of course can only speak to those specializing in tech or cybersecurity as that's my field, but this is quite literally the experience of thousands of people like me, people who are soon to graduate or have already graduated. I mean, take for instance, this conversation I stumbled across in my university discord. One of these newly graduated students is complaining how they're having to look for a help desk position after earning their bachelor's in cybersecurity. Now, if it were me, I'd be pretty pissed. I'd be pissed over the fact that I'm even in that situation, that I'm looking for totally different positions outside of the skill set I had studied four years for. All right, but why is this happening? Why are students suddenly having to put in much more effort nowadays to get their foot in the door? The answer to the question I just asked and the question that many people ask is actually a lot simpler than you'd expect. First of all, let's look at this article from Bloomberg. Uh, the article is titled Class of 2024 Can't Land Jobs as Hiring in Tech Finance Wanes. After reading through this, a couple of things caught my eye. The first thing is from this specific paragraph. Let's check it out. The overall labor market has proven resilient in the face of the Federal Reserve's aggressive rate hikes to quell inflation. The healthcare sector, for instance, has created more jobs, but growth in better paying industries such as tech and finance has been more uneven. Hiring in both sectors was down more than 20% in November compared to a year ago, according to data from LinkedIn. As we read here further on, it says, here, companies navigating an uncertain economy and higher interest rates have pulled back on entry-level hiring. Four years ago, you know, companies were hiring like crazy during COVID, but now we are seeing that they're taking those measures to basically cut a bunch of costs and a lot of it is very strategic but that obviously doesn't paint the whole picture reading further into the article we learn something else that's important it says in 2022 there was a job opening for every applicant according to linkedin now there are two applicants for every job the statement is pretty evident that with the number of new grads that are joining the field uh, like tech or finance there's just so much more of us like i mean everyone and their mother was telling us youngsters to go into these fields because they were paying a lot of money. But for also many of us, it's just what we were interested in. Regardless, there is an effect, oversaturation. The, the market is oversaturated. It's just also that's simple fact. So you're watching this video probably thinking to yourself, wow, I'm screwed. And don't worry, I've thought the same thing. Um, I sometimes continue to think that. But as I'm navigating this, I'm learning a lot, learning some cool strategies that I figured I could share with you guys. First strategy is a question, actually. It's a question to you guys uh, to, to ask yourself. And that question is, are you ready to be competitive? And the reason I asked this question specifically is because many of us treat college and university as a sort of gradual path where competition is not really necessary, right? Everyone's kind of on their own path and doing their own thing. So why would there be a need for competition? We're kind of living proof that competition is inevitable. And it's kind of like, you've got to really put yourself out there now if you want a certain position. And although that might suck, it's just the reality. And I think that's like the second part is just simply accepting the fact that you are in a competitive market and whether you like it or not, you're going to have to be competitive. So that kind of two part really to get you thinking about i guess your career choice and whether or not it's a challenge you're up for so you've asked yourself that question and you might have come to the conclusion that it's not really your thing to be competitive and that's okay but if it is then stick around because here's what i'll tell you 
if you're competitive, that's great. That means you have a fighting chance of surviving in this, in this job market. As long as you're willing to put up a fight and that's by being competitive, you've got to figure out how to be competitive. This is something everyone does now, but two years ago in my second year of college, I was just applying to at least 10 jobs every day or 10 internships. I eventually got a response and got an internship. That alone might not seem like being competitive, but let me tell you, once I got that internship, I was super focused. All I did was learn. Like there was not a minute where I was not learning something new. If you would have saw me in that internship, you would have seen, I always asked questions. I spoke up, you know, I volunteered to present something. I uh, stood up new projects, like unique projects. That to me is being competitive. I'm not the only intern, right? I'm surrounded by a bunch of other interns in this organization. I want to be the intern that they eventually hire full time. And through my efforts, I received a offer to come back again as an intern next year. So not only do I have basically two internships under my belt, but I've already established such a really good relationship with a important organization. Okay, sure, I was competitive during an internship, but that doesn't really make sense, right? What about before getting that first internship? What do you do to be competitive? Why not make a website? I don't know, create your own blog, start making videos like I'm doing here. Why not go to conferences and connect with people or start a unique project? Truth is, those are super obvious things to do. A lot of people are probably doing them already and that just should probably drive you to be even more competitive and figure out newer ways to stand out. I mean, I don't have all the ways figured out, but yeah, you better believe that the people you are quote unquote competing against have a spruced up resume, have attended a bunch of conferences, connected with people, have a website, have a portfolio. We've basically reached a point where these things pretty much becoming essential. So now we've got to figure out newer ways. I'll tell you a newer way that I've figured out. Why not work on your public speaking abilities? Yes, that, that may come to a shocker um, because like who, why would you need to know how to speak publicly or, or be comfortable speaking publicly? This is definitely one thing that people kind of skip over, but believe it or not, being personable and being able to speak is a huge part of getting hired. You may be applying to an internship and you probably don't have all the qualifications of, you know, whatever it is like Python or, or a certification, whatever, but you being able to speak and have some sort of personality, in my opinion, I've noticed is very important. And again, it all, it all depends on the kind of workplace you're applying to. Some hiring managers don't really look for that kind of thing. The workplace, at least in my opinion, is becoming, becoming more personable. Yeah, that, that's the best way to put it. They're not trying to hire robots a lot of the time. And unfortunately, I'll end off the video on kind of a abrupt note. That being, if you at least learned a couple things from this video, it's, it's hopefully that you've got to do a lot of things to stand out because a lot of people are already doing them. So you want to kind of be on the same level with the rest of the competition, but figure out new ways to stand out newer ways, similar to ones like I've mentioned and doing cool new things that might catch a hiring manager's eye. That's where I'll leave it. If you guys enjoyed, please consider leaving a like. I've got a Discord community down below. It doesn't have many people. I think it has like five, but I would definitely appreciate if you guys consider joining. And uh, lastly, subscribe if you haven't. But yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.